making the headlines tonight. The king and queen mother of Cambodia extend their congratulations to Prime Minister Hun Sen for winning the Sunhak Peace Prize 2022. The president of the Japanese Association in Cambodia requests the Prime Minister's permission to bring Japanese investors to visit Cambodia and help solve the issue of Prek Phanaut River flooding. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau announces he has tested positive for COVID-19. Fireworks light up the sky over China's capital of Beijing in a rehearsal ahead of the opening ceremony for the Winter Olympics. And across China, people celebrate the Lunar New Year. This is the Daily Roundup on EAC News Channel. A very good evening to you. I'm Darshana Gochen. The King of Cambodia, His Majesty Norodom Sihamoni, and His Majesty the Queen Mother Norodom Moninit Sihanouk expressed their congratulations and praise to Prime Minister Hun Sen for winning the Sunhak Peace Prize 2022 from South Korea's Sunhak Peace Foundation. EAC News reporter Anthony Ellis has more. In two separate royal messages, the King and the Queen Mother stated they consider the Prime Minister's achievement in receiving the 2022 Sunhak Peace Prize as a great honour for the nation and the people of Cambodia, and something that most exemplifies the Premier's intellectual sacrifices for the nation, motherland and people. The statement listed, leading the end of the bloody war of Cambodia, bringing full peace to the country, national unity, territorial integrity, guaranteeing national independence and sovereignty, promoting liberal democracy and the rule of law, as well as making the country developed in all fields and having prestige on the international stage, as some of the Prime Minister's achievements that make him fitting recipient of the award. Prime Minister Hun Sen will be presented the 2022 Sunhok Peace Prize on February 12th in Seoul, South Korea. The president of the Sunhak Peace Foundation, Thomas G. Walsh, has stated that Prime Minister Hun Sen was selected for his award because of the strong leadership which has contributed to stability, economic development and peace in Cambodia, as well as the region of Southeast Asia. Anthony Ellis, EAC News. The President of the National Assembly of Cambodia, Heng Samrin, expressed his happiness that Prime Minister Hun Sen was chosen as the winner of the 2022 Sunhak Peace Prize, which he says is a source of pride for Cambodia as a whole and is a most worthy award for the Prime Minister. National Assembly President Heng Samrin included that it is a great source of pride and honor for the people of Cambodia that Prime Minister Hun Sen is receiving this very worthy award. He stated the Prime Minister's leadership, his success in national unification and reconciliation through his win-win politics which brought about peace, stability and prosperity to Cambodia, as well as the current development and progress seen in all areas of the country, prove that he is a worthy recipient of the award. Prime Minister Hun Sen will receive the 2022 Sunhak Peace Prize in Seoul, South Korea on 12 February. The president of the Sunhak Peace Foundation has said that Prime Minister Hun Sen was selected for his strong leadership and contribution to stability, economic development and peace in both Cambodia and the wider Southeast Asian region. The president of the Japanese Association in Cambodia, Takahashi Fumaiki, requested the permission of the prime minister to bring Japanese investors to visit Cambodia in April 2022, who will also examine the possibility of helping to solve the flooding of Prek Tanout River. During the meeting with Prime Minister Hun Sen at the office of the Council of Ministers on Tuesday morning, Mr. Takanashi requested the Prime Minister's permission to allow his association to help solve the issue of the recent flooding of Prek Tanot River during the rainy season, which have affected many local families. The Prime Minister's personal assistant, Eng Sopolet, spoke to reporters after the meeting and confirmed that the request was welcomed by the Prime Minister, Hun Sun, who ordered the Secretary General of the Council for the Development of Cambodia, CDC, Sok Tendra Sopia, along with the Minister of Water Resources and other relevant units to review this project. During the meeting, the Japanese Association also officially handed over the plot of the land to the Prime Minister to build the Cambodian Japan Memorial Park named PKO Park. Prime Minister Hun Sen accepted the land and assigned the CDC to work with the Phnom Penh Capital Administration on the construction. 
Click to note river orientates from the Ariel Mountain of Kampong Spu Province, following through the border of Kandal Province and Phnom Penh before reaching the Basak River. Every rainy season, the flooding of the Prek Tonot disturbs the lives along the river, especially those in Khan Dongkal and Khan Kambal, Phnom Penh. In 2021, the flood of Prek Tonot River affected more than 3,000 families and 11,000 people. The Minister of Interior, Deputy Prime Minister Saw King, has said that authorities seized more than 84 tons of chemicals for drug use in 2021, an increase of more than 1,000% compared to 2020. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has more. Writing on his personal Facebook page, Minister Saw King expressed concern over the increase in import of drugs and drug ingredients to Cambodia saying that in 2021, Cambodia continued to be adversely affected by the negative situation with the high risk of drugs. He said that this problem would not be easy to tackle. The minister revealed some data on drug crackdowns conducted in 2021, which included 6,308 drug crimes, a decrease of 4,153 cases compared to 2020, and a total arrest of 13,973 suspects, including 8,672 suspects in trafficking cases, 5,264 drug users, 9 cultivators, and 39 processors. Among those suspects, 365 were foreigners. He also added that in 2021, the police seized a total of more than 4 tons and 689 kilograms of drugs and cracked down on 53,187 fresh marijuana plants and more than 135 kilograms of dried marijuana while the drug chemical crackdown of about 84 tons indicated an increase of more than 1,000% from the previous year. The police reported also confiscating a total of 79 firearms during these crackdowns. The minister further wrote, saying that although the number of drug cases cracked down on the authorities has decreased, the number of cases of major drug offenses has increased, with a total of about 80 tons of drugs seized, including dangerous large-scale automatic processing machines in Phnom Penh and other provinces bordering Laos, Thailand, and Vietnam, both coming through the post office and maritime imports. The minister has called on all citizens to join the fight against drugs, not to be involved in drugs, not to obstruct the implementation of the law on drug offenders, not to make concession to drug offenders, and to report to the authorities any drug offenses. On January 25, the Minister of Interior blamed a lack of cooperation between drug officials and the ministry in charge of issuing license for the increase of drug traffickers bringing in drugs to Cambodia, and most recently and notably, a total of more than 100 tons that was seized in the third weekend of January. He put pressure on one particular minister that provided these licenses by saying that without meticulous review, this minister would be indebted to the Cambodian people for damaging public health. One day after Minister Sar Kang's remarks, the Minister of Agriculture ordered the General Department of Agriculture of the Ministry to pay more attention to the control of chemical fertilizers and pesticides that can be used in drug production, requiring cooperation with the drug authorities to carefully check for the entrance of these chemical fertilizers and drugs into Cambodia. Robin Lim, EAC News. The Asian Development Bank has approved two grants worth a total of $6.8 million to help restore tourism, improve the quality and production of rice, and strengthen the rice supply chain in Cambodia after facing the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic. EAC News reporter Robin Lim has more. The ADB grant approval is divided into two packages. The first package, worth $3.7 million, is expected to benefit 4,000 communities through the COVID-19 community-based Tourism Rehabilitation Project, which covers areas near the Prevahir Heritage Temple in Prevahir Province and Phnom Penh Temple in Dakao Province. About $3 million of this assistance is provided by the Japan Fund for Prosperous and Resilient Asia and the Pacific. The second $3.9 million aid package will benefit 22,000 smallholder farmers. This package provides an additional funding for climate resilient rice trade development programs in Batambang, Kapong Tom, and Prey Rank Province. About $3.8 million in grants is coming from the Global Agriculture and Food Security Program, a global fund aimed at reducing hunger and improving nutrition in low-income countries. The acting director of ADB in Cambodia, Anthony Gill, said the two grants would boost the Cambodian economy as well as help rice farmers in Cambodia increase their income 
and resistance to COVID-19. Robin Lim, EAC News. Cambodia has reported 35 new COVID-19 cases, including seven that are imported. There have been 98 patient recoveries and once again, zero deaths. The kingdom recorded 28 new community and seven new imported cases of the new variant. Cambodia has now recorded 949 cases of Omicron, 488 imported and 461 community cases. Cambodia's COVID-19 case tally has now climbed to 121,390. The death toll stands at 3,015. The number of patients treated successfully since the pandemic reached Cambodia is 117,633. And the tally for imported cases has climbed to 20,345. Healthcare workers are currently treating a total of 774 patients. And now for a look at news making international headlines this Tuesday, 1st of February. About 1,400 U.S. flights were canceled early on Sunday, January 30, after the northeastern part of the country was walloped by a first winter storm a day earlier. Several U.S. states had declared emergencies in response to the storm, which formed in the Atlantic Ocean off the Carolinas and has continued depositing snow until Sunday morning as it moved north to Maine. The total number of flights cancellation within, into, or out of the United States was about 1,400 as of 10.30 a.m., according to flight tracking website flightaware.com. Another 647 U.S.-related flights were delayed, the data has showed. The LaGuardia Airport and the John F. Kennedy International Airport in New York City and the Boston Logan International Airport each had over 200 flight cancellations as of early Sunday. The first winter storm on Saturday has dropped more than two feet of snow on some areas while packing high winds, prompting thousands of flight cancellations and leading governors in Rhode Island and other states to curtail access to the roads. An aerial footage from Brazil shows the destruction brought by heavy rains in Franco de Rocha, Sao Paulo State on Sunday, January 30. Landslides and flooding from heavy rains in Sao Paulo State have killed at least 21 people since Friday, including seven children and destroyed homes. Sao Paulo Governor Jao Doria flew over the flooded areas on Sunday and he has said that he has authorized $42.79 million of emergency aid for the affected cities. Since December, heavy rains have triggered deadly floods in northeast Brazil, threatened to delay harvests in the Midwest, and briefly forced suspension of mining operations in the state of Minas Gerais. The National Weather Service Miami, South Florida, warned the public on Sunday, January 30th, that immobilized iguanas could fall from trees due to cold temperatures across the region. Iguanas are cold-blooded. They slow down or become immobile when temperatures drop into the 40s. They may fall from trees, but they are not dead, the service said on their social media. Zoologist Stacy Cohen, a reptile expert at Palm Beach Zoo in Florida, has explained the phenomenon to ABC affiliate WPBF. Cohen says iguanas' bodies basically start to shut down and lose their functions during temperature drops. They'll be up in the branches asleep, and then when it gets cold, they suddenly lose the ability to stay hanging on and then fall out of the trees a lot. Although most of these reptiles will likely survive this period of immobilization, Cohen also added that freezing temperatures were a threat to their survival and pointed to a cold snap in 2010 that wiped out a large number of the iguana population. Cold is a very life-threatening thing for the iguanas because they are from parts of Central and South America close to the equator where it always stays very warm. According to the National Weather Service, temperature in South Florida reached a low of 25 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 4 degrees Celsius on Sunday morning, and high temperatures on Sunday were expected to remain in the upper 50s to low 60s around 10 to 15 degrees Celsius. Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau has announced on Monday, January 31st, that he had tested positive for COVID-19, but he was feeling fine and would continue to work remotely while following public health guidelines. The 50-year-old Prime Minister Trudeau 
went into isolation for two weeks in March 2020 at the start of the pandemic after his wife Sophie had tested positive for COVID-19. The Prime Minister Trudeau has also said Canadians were disgusted by the behaviour of some people protested against the COVID-19 vaccine mandates in Ottawa and has said he would not be intimidated by those hurling abuse. Dozens of trucks and other vehicles have jammed up the central Ottawa since Friday and thousands have descended upon Parliament Hill to complain about Trudeau and COVID-19 vaccine mandates. Police have said most demonstrators have been peaceful, but local residents complain that they are fed up with the non-stop blaring of truck horns and demonstrators using the streets as an open-air toilet. Some also forced the homeless shelter to give them food, the shelter said on Twitter while others have flew Nazi flags. We are not intimidated by those who hurl abuse at small business workers and steal food from homeless, Trudeau has told news conference. We won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who encourage vandalism. There is no place in our country for threats, violence or hatred, he added. Senior members of the official opposition Conservative Party which last year lost its third conservative election in Trudeau's Liberals, have praised the demonstrators. After the break, a look at all the latest sports news. If it's happening and you need to know about it, you'll get it all right here. EAC News brings you updates and breaking news in English across all of our platforms and channels. The EAC News app, YouTube, Facebook, Telegram, Twitter, and our website, www.eacnews.asia. Join me and the rest of the EAC News team every day on your favourite channels. EAC News, Cambodia made clear. ហើយលោកអ្នកជិតរៀបអាពីពីពីមែនទេហើយពិបាករកក្រុមហ៊ុនថត់វីដេអូផ្សាយផ្ទាល់ដែលមានគុណភាពមែនទេអស់កង្វ
การผลิตตามปัจจัยกาวิจิตตอนสมัยรัติกาดังจูทัวร์ออยการบันทีลูกเนี่ยการแต่เมียนพิบออกจากลูกเนี่ยมุบานเคยรอสการมาเพียบขนมพิธีแต่เลยเป็นเจาะตุรุตัวกลุ่มหงทมกำลังโฟเคสหนึ่งการบรรจังเลือดแดงกระนาดสอกรมแดงอังอุดีได้เมียนรูปเพียบฉบับกรอเจาะพเนยส้มไอเจียเกาะฟีไอเลิ่มนี่ตามประจักษ์ในตุรสัตว์ส้มตะปีปรับใบรอยมาผิดใบปรับใบรอยซ้ายสับปรับใบส้มตะปรับปีปรับใบรอยสามสับปรับใบปรับใบรอยแปดสับประบุนหนึ่งส้มตะปรับมวยปรับใบรอยมาผิดใบปรับใบรอยซ้ายสับปรับใบราฟิกาตุ่มลูกจัดกาตุ่มตัวเข้าเตาหนึ่งกุนดับเพียบปูลิทอสกายโอเวอร์ไชน่าสแคปิตอลเบจิงในวันเสาร์วันที่30ในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประชุมในการประ The opening ceremony of the 2022 Winter Olympics is scheduled to take place on Friday, February 4. As mandated by the Olympic Charter, the proceedings are expected to combine the formal and ceremonial opening of this international sporting event, including welcoming speeches, hoisting of the flags, and the parade of athletes, with an artistic spectacle to showcase the host nation's winter culture and modern history. The games are expected officially to be opened by the General Secretary of the Chinese Community Party and President of the People's Republic of China, Xi Jinping. The opening ceremony is expected to be directed by film director and producer Zhang Yimou, who has previously directed the opening and closing ceremonies of the 2008 Summer Olympics, which was China's first time hosting the Olympics. Today, anything can be a professional sport. Pillow fighting has been turned into a professional combat sport as athletes competed in the ring in Florida. The pillow fight championships took place in Florida on 29th January, where 16 men and eight women fought for the two titles. Each winner earned a title belt and $5,000. When you were growing up, the chances were you would have had a pillow fight with your mates. Some people might have grown out of that playful bit of fun. However, others have decided to turn it into a professional sport. Introducing the Pillow Fight Championships (PFC), the legitimate sport that sees two people battle inside a ring with a comfy-looking pillow. It is very similar to the likes of boxing. However, you are allowed to use a specialized PFC-branded pillow to absolutely wallop your opponent with. Pillow fighting championships started with an idea to develop a real fighting sport that would appeal to the international family audience by combining the ancient weapon known as a pillow with experienced MMA competitors and boxers' strict rules. There are three two-minute rounds to, in each fight. 
the PFC said they have quickly evolved into a very popular sport by a showcase complete with all the strengths, stamina and strategic skills of the other more brutal compact sports but a massive amount of fun. They pride themselves on having all the thrill of the hand-to-hand -hand combat fighting without any blood and a lot more action. A PFC battle was held over the weekend in Florida and the pay-per-view event saw 16 men and 8 women compete for their chance of the title belt and cash prize of $5,000. Brazil's Estela Nunes won in the women's division and American Harley Tillman took the men's. They've been officially crowned as the first ever PFC champions. Champion in the red corner, Holly. For the first time since 1989, the Cincinnati Bengals are headed to the Super Bowl and the Kansas City Chiefs are headed home after playing in the Super Bowl the previous two seasons. Rookie kicker Ivan McPherson has made a 31-yard field goal in overtime Sunday, January 30, capping an 18-point rally by the Bengals en route to a 27-24 upset of the host Chiefs in the AFC Championship game. Cincinnati, which had the worst record in the NFL two seasons ago, overcame a 21-3 first half deficit against Patrick Mahomes in Kansas City, holding the high-powered chips to three points after halftime. Joe Burrow threw for 250 yards and two touchdowns, and McPherson went 4-4-4 four for four on field goals for the fourth seeded Bengals, who will face either the Los Angeles Rams or San Francisco 49ers in the Super Bowl in Inglewood, California on February 13. Mahomes passed for 275 yards and three touchdowns with two interceptions for Kansas City. The second seeded Chiefs, who got the ball first in overtime last weekend and drove for the winning touchdown against Buffalo in the divisional playoffs, again won the overtime coin toss Sunday. However, Mahomes was intercepted on the third play on a deep ball that was broken up by Jesse Bates III and intercepted by Vaughn Bell, Burrow, and Joe Mixon helped move the ball deep into Kansas City territory, and McPherson made his kick with 9.22 left to stand the home crowd. I mean, you take away the good things, uh, just like any season. Um, it's definitely disappointing. I mean, here um, with this group of guys that we have, we expect to, to be in that game and, and to, to win that game, and anything less than that is, is not success. Um, so we'll, we'll go back, we'll look at all the things we did well, the adversity we battled through, the better the team that we became towards the end of the season. Um, and try to learn and try to learn from the mistakes that we made and try to be better next year. With a game tied 21-21, McPherson snuck a 52-yard field goal inside the left upright with 6-4 to play in the fourth quarter, giving the Bengals their first lead of the game. That, of course, left more than enough time for Mahomes, who drove the chips inside the Cincinnati 10 with a chance to tie or win. On the next to last play of regulation, Mahomes attempted to buy time deep into the pocket before he was stripped off the ball by Cincinnati's Sam Hubbard. Kansas City recovered, but it forced Harrison Butker to attempt a 44-yard field goal, which he drilled as times expired to force overtime. Mahomes throw first half, TD passes to Tyheek Hill, Travis Kills and McCall Hardman helping the host build a 21-3 caution. And now for a look at how the weather will be playing out tomorrow. And finally, this Tuesday, February 1st, is the Lunar New Year. 
celebrated by nearly 2 billion people worldwide, with celebrations that can last for weeks. Also known as the Chinese New Year and the Spring Festival in China, this year the date marks the end of the Year of the Ox and the start of the Year of the Tiger. And in China, people across the country are staging a variety of joyous activities in creating a festive atmosphere to ring in the new year. In Pingyao County of North China's Shanxi province, people are singing and dancing to welcome the upcoming Spring Festival. In the South Street, also known as Ming and Qing Dynasty's Ancient Street, which is the central axis of Pingyao ancient city, dating back to almost 1,000 years ago, colorful folk custom experience activities are drawing locals and tourists to get involved and experience the festive atmosphere. Craftsmen are making cloth shoes with traditional handicrafts, and calligraphers, both young and old, are surrounded by locals and visitors eager to receive their works. About 100 young artists in Fuzhou city of southeast China's Fujian province are interpreting the Fu Hu Tiger of Blessings and Happiness culture in various forms. Artists are making and showing Fuzhou bodiless lacquer wares, and painters are presenting street art through drawing. The traditional folk custom activity of 12 elder sisters sending peace has contributed to creating a strong festive atmosphere. In Zhengding County of Shijiazhuang City in North China's Hebei province, local people have staged a dazzling dragon dance and beaten drums to usher in the upcoming Chinese New Year. Dancers and performers walking on stilts have earned rounds of laughter from both locals and tourists. The running bamboo horse dance, a traditional folk performance, has also attracted many visitors. The horses are made entirely of bamboo and the performance implies sending blessings to people. As the Lunar New Year of 2022 will be the Year of the Tiger, various forms of tiger-style handicrafts are favored by the people. Calligraphy enthusiasts are writing the Chinese character Fu, meaning blessings and happiness, and folk artists are creating paper-cutting works for the holiday. The cuisine in Zhengling has also become a new name card for tourism. As many of these delicacies have a history of more than 100 years, a lot of tourists are coming here to feel the authentic taste of Zhengling. The Spring Festival is China's grandest traditional festival, when people across the country return to their hometowns for Lunar New Year celebrations and family reunions. The tiger takes the third place on the Chinese zodiac circle of 12 animals. Under China's traditional social customs, the zodiac sign of the tiger is a symbol of strength, exercising evils, and braveness. Many Chinese kids wear hats or shoes with a tiger image for good luck. Thank you for watching the Daily Roundup on EAC News Channel. For more breaking news and updates, you can check out our website, eacnews.asia, or search EAC News on Telegram or at your favorite app store. More from the EAC News team tomorrow night at 8 p.m. We will see you then.